Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. This is Chris Nichols here from DP Review, and I'm here with Rishi Sanyal from DP Review. And uh, don't be distracted by Richard Butler, who's in the background. Uh, he'd be part of this roundtable discussion, but uh, he looks very busy. Yeah, yeah I, I do have opinions, but I'm really quite busy. So uh, that's there you go. You might hear something from him. So we just attended the launch of the Canon R. Keep in mind, guys, we're tired. It's super late. We're using hotel lighting to light this, so it looks like, <laughs> and uh, we're a little drunk. So we are going to talk about um, just a few functions on, on this new camera, where it fits in the industry. Of course, we have a big full test coming, don't we, Rishi? Yes, we're going to be doing a lot of thorough testing for both uh, DP Review TV episode as well as our um, editorial content on dpreview.com. Yeah, I think the first thing we should talk about is a lot of people are asking, is this a 5D4 in mirrorless? And I think the answer is no. No, I don't think so either. Um, I think that the closer camera to compare it to would be the 6D Mark II. Sure. Um, both from a price point as well as a um, performance aspect and some of the specifications. I mean, yeah, basically it's got the 5D Mark IV sensor. Right. We should note that we have the new Digicate processor, so yeah. that'll make some changes. But otherwise, the buffer's not as good. The weather right. ceiling's more like the 6D Mark II. The price is more like the 62. That was a pleasant surprise because we were all kind of thinking like, oh man, are they going to make this thing four grand? Are they going to be a three and a half grand? Yeah. 2200 US is a pretty sweet uh, price point. Yeah, I think it's great, but it's also appropriate for the camera and its specs and its performance. Um, it's, some of its specs actually line up with the 5D Mark IV. Like you're saying, it's a 5D Mark IV sensor, so you get yeah. that resolution, you get better dynamic range in 6D Mark II. But when you look at the performance um, in terms of AF and the burst rate and the ability to continuously refocus and continuous drive, sure. it's not very high. It's, it's 5 FPS, and then if you want focus priority, it drops to 3. three? 8 that's frames per second, but only if there's no focus involved. Right, and that's, yeah, you want focus. And that's much more like the 6D Mark II in performance. I think it's a very promising system. The lens lineup looks pretty cool. It does. Um, and Canon glass of late, is just, they just make amazing lenses. So the system as a whole has a lot of promise. I think that this camera, as its first introductory camera into mirrorless, might fall short of some expectations, but it speaks highly of where that system is going to go. Okay, so carrying on to then maybe more the features of how the camera handled and, and what we liked about it and what we didn't like about it. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So first off, I think you'd agree the camera's got a very solid feel. Yeah. It's weather sealed to some extent. They kind of said roughly 62 territory. Right. Uh, but good weight to it, nice controls. I was especially impressed with the resolution of the EVF. Yeah, actually the EVF and the LCD resolution as you're shooting is very high res, just mm -hmm. like we saw with the Nikon, and much higher res than what we see with some competitors like Sony cameras, despite sure. using the same um, resolution EVF. And minimal blackout time too, yeah. which is also nice. It yeah. was really nice. If you're in single drive, when you take a shot, you barely just notice a stutter. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, when you're shooting continuous drive, there's more of that stutter, but you, it, they don't actually have a blackout um, in between. And it's kind of nice. It, it kind of makes it feel more immediate, like you can continue shooting, relying on the, like what you're seeing, for sure. and focusing on it. Which is going to win over the SLR users, yes. who already take that for granted. Exactly. Right? Uh, I would also say autofocus performance. I mean, again, we're going to test it out quite a bit, but mm -hmm. certainly low light, it seemed to do a very good job. They're saying minus 6 EV with 1.2 lenses, yeah. but we found that it did a very nice job in low light as, yeah. as far as it goes. And so comparably, like if you were to compare this to what, what's stated by some of the other mirrorless manufacturers, I would probably be around minus 4.5 EV with F2 lenses. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as you put slower lenses on this camera, it's lower light performance Absolutely. is going to start dropping. But it autofocuses with the wide aperture open. wide open. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. and that's that's actually huge because even if you stop down to f8, it's always focusing wide open, and even in continuous drive, even at 5 fps, when you're shooting, it always opens the up the, up the aperture. Get as much light as possible. Exactly. And again, full review, we're going to test the autofocus as much yeah. as we can. That's very encouraging. Yeah. Now, for many systems, of course, it's very familiar to a Canon user, yeah. and we've often complained about how Canons lack any sort of real customizability. Mm -hmm. It's their way or the highway kind of thing. But yeah. I did find, you know, this has got this new touch multifunction bar in the back. Mm -hmm. um, it does have quite a good array of customizability, so mm -hmm. this is maybe a step in the right direction. I don't know if it's yeah. as far as they need to go. Um, but being able to take that touch bar and assign it to bunch of different things as well as mm. the, um, the new, uh, it's actually not new, but the old MFN button now actually allows you to quickly change a bunch of different parameters. Yeah, which is nice because it's not just about choosing your autofocusing grid anymore. Right. You can actually assign it to a bunch of different things and quickly change other settings. Mm. Uh, also, you can uh, set different settings for video and stills mode, which is nice. Thank you, Richard. Get back to work. What he was saying is that you can actually set separate 
photo and video functions on the camera, something that we've always taken for granted on Panasonic's, uh, you know, many of the other video cameras, but it's, again, a step in the right direction. Well, the, the fact that it remembers your exposure settings as, when you switch to video and back to photo, that's very important. Yeah. Sorry, that's my, that's my burger. I'm starving. Okay, sorry for that abrupt jump cut. It's a good pickle. Is it a good pickle? Good pickle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Rishi hasn't eaten anything, so yeah, there you go, there's your burger. Right. Room service. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, you know, the height of rudeness, but Rishi's gonna eat while we continue this review. Can you cover that up? Uh, okay, fine. Jeez. So while we're on this topic of, of controls and handling for video, uh, one of the main improvements I think on this camera is video and uh, I know Jordan would love to talk about it but he's behind camera and he's going to be quiet so I will cover this for you, okay? The main takeaways that I think people are wanting to know, it does do 4K, not 60 frames per second and there is a 1.7 crop. That's what we saw with the 5D Mark IV, so that's a heavy crop and um, while rolling shutter might be slightly improved, it was it seemed overall in general to be similar to what we saw with the 5D Mark IV. Absolutely. Which is, that could be problematic for certain people. Now, it is FC log internal. You can do a 10-bit 422 output through the HDMI Just, port. That's, that's pretty cool too. That's Woo! huge for Canon. Shut up, Jordan. Now, I, is it gonna be sharp? I don't know. Canon still traditionally doesn't have the sharpest video. We're yeah. gonna test that quite a bit. But I do wanna mention another thing very quickly here. This is a unique camera in that it does support vloggers. And actually a lot of the people who do a lot of vlogging at, the, at this event were very excited. So we are now having a full mic jack, headphone jack, rotating screen, right. touch screen, dual pixel AF, right? right. And, and it's funny, the only thing reason why I even mention is because so many manufacturers have frustrated us because they're not giving us a lot of those features. Yeah. Canon's finally done it. That 1.7 crop, you can mitigate that problem by using one of the new adapters with an EFS lens like the 10 to 18, right. for example. And the performance you saw with the adapters, again, just seemed sure. perfectly like native lenses. So you're gonna get that benefit. And um, yeah, it's for, like you said, for vloggers, it's going to be great. And Canon is almost there in their messaging. You can see that they're really encouraging um, new creatives, and that's, that's Instagrammers and going. vloggers. And so that's that's where they're going, and that's they're they're inspiring it. They talked about growing the market, which means bringing in new people. Yeah, and that's what they're targeting and bringing in new creatives. So that's so a good that's, message. That's a great segue because I know you want to eat the rest of your food here. Into so we've seen Nikon come out with the ZZ series, Z series. Z. Z, Z series, no, Z6 and Chris. Z7, Z, oh. Z, Z6 and Z7, and now we've got this Canon, and of course, we've got to talk about the Sonys, like the a7 III. So where do these cameras fit? And I think for me, the main takeaway is this. It seems obvious that on paper, the Nikon does give us extra features, and mm -hmm. they're giving us two cameras so that you can punch to a lower resolution if you want, or a higher resolution, and this yeah. Canon's splitting the difference. Yeah. But the other thing that I would really say is, it feels like these are, to be fair, stopgap cameras. They're really aimed at Nikon users and Canon users with existing lenses now having mirrorless options that that lets them still use their lenses. Yeah, right? you know, I, I have to agree with you on that. These like they they do seem like stopgap cameras, and the bar is set by the best mirrorless right now. And some of these cameras fall quite short of that bar in many respects. Um, that said, there's a lot to like about these cameras. Absolutely. And, and as they're trying to bring over their existing users from the DSLR side, they're not necessarily saying that you should switch. They're saying this is a camera you should add to your arsenal. Right. Um, they're very, yeah, very, very strong in that kind right. of comment. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it works because their adapters have native performance. So that's yeah. great. You can use the glass you have. But um, on the other hand, there are a couple things that are missing in that sort of making it seamless to come over from a DSLR. And uh, one of the main mm -hmm. things we have, uh, one of our main um, gripes with both the Nikon and the Canon is that uh, shooters coming over from the DSLRs are going to find the AF systems unfamiliar. For sure. Yeah, so Nikon kind of did it halfway and it's getting there, but they're missing like some of the dynamic modes and 3D yeah. tracking. And here, it's more like the uh, live view AF modes on their DSLRs, which to their credit, were very good, but <laughs> most people who shoot Canon DSLRs shoot through the optical viewfinder, and they're gonna suddenly encounter this camera and, and wanna move the AF point, and there's no AF joystick. Yeah, you know, we it's talked about how 
you know, Nikon SLR users didn't use the live view on the screen because the yeah. autofocus sucked. Yeah. And Canon users did to some degree. Yeah. But really, these cameras are using, for Canon, the M series autofocusing system. Yeah. And for Nikon, the Coolpix 1 autofocusing system. Yeah. So this is great for Nikon and Canon SLR users that also own Coolpix 1 and yeah. M cameras, respectively. And now buy this. They'll find it very familiar. But for SLR users, it will be a learning curve. Right. Because, in fact, with the Canon, you have to rely on the touch screen to move your AF point around. There's no joystick. And, and, yeah, and there's some like there's some advantages of that because you can move the AF point around quickly, but the touch screen unfortunately is pretty laggy. And plus you have to set up the touch screen to do that and do it the way that is most comfortable to you. So people picking up the camera immediately, DSLR shooters coming over, are going to have a learning curve and it's I feel like it's a learning curve that didn't need to exist. They Fair could enough. have they could have ported stuff over so it felt right at home right. for DSLR users and they haven't done that and that's a shame. I think they could have. I think key thing to remember is um, if you're a Nikon user, this Canon's not going to make you switch to Canon. If right. you're a Canon user, you're not going to switch over to a Z6 or Z7. And if you're a Sony user or somebody starting out fresh into photography, I think Sony's still yeah. probably if you're a Sony user, you're not going to very viable use. You're not going to switch over here, no. and if you're a new user, um, you might end up going Sony. There's a lot more that Sony offers. That said, there's still some very things, very good things that this does correctly. But I do yeah. want to say we have a production version here of this new Canon R. So we're going to play with it. We're going to do a full review. Uh, very shortly, though, we will have Z6, Z7 reviews, full reviews when we get those in production as well. Right. And uh, otherwise, if you guys have questions, again, don't forget, our Instagram feed's full of this stuff. We've been tweeting and, and putting a lot of comments, answering a lot of comments in our feeds. Uh, Richard is furiously at work writing an article, I'm assuming, right now for this. <laughs> I'm also furiously at work, and I know you're all pissed about the single card slot, and we're all very angry as well. So single, we thank you. Not why didn't you? That. Why didn't you mention the Thank single card slot? Thank you for the slot, single card slot. Both cameras have single card slots. I know UHS two for the Canon, XQD for the Nikon's. But okay, hopefully you guys found that useful. Let's let Rishi eat and uh, keep following. We're gonna have more videos coming very soon uh, to answer all your questions about these two. Let's say exciting, but maybe not totally right. full feature cameras. Okay, right? we're, we're cut. You can eat three sheep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he probably cut like five minutes because just like, screw you guys. <laughs>